While thousands of people have been celebrating here in Washington, others have used the inauguration as an excuse for destruction for no obvious reason. At the intersection of 13th and K, right downtown here in D.C., just a few blocks from the inaugural parade route, somebody set a limousine on fire. We've got pictures of it right there and spray painted We the People on it. Not clear which people they were referring to. Riders also smashed windows of stores. At least six police officers have been injured, three of them due to thrown objects from rioters. Police have come back with pepper spray and smoke grenades and flash bang grenades. As of tonight, more than 200 people have been arrested by D.C. police, many charged with felony rioting. No reports of a jailhouse ball tonight. Well, President Donald Trump's inauguration is the biggest event of the week here in Washington, in fact, in the country, but it's not the only event. Tomorrow, the mall will see the Women's March on Washington, which is intended to send a message of some kind to the president on his first full day in office. Organizers say the event is open to women of all backgrounds. And that pledge does not extend to all women, actually, including a pro-life feminist group, which has been barred from participating because they have the wrong views on abortion. We're joined now by Destiny Herndon De La Rosa, founder of New Wave Feminists. Destiny, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having so, me. I, I just want to be clear that I understand the story that we're not mischaracterizing in any way. You are, of course, a woman. You presumably are opposed to Donald Trump, like most of uh, the, all the women in this march. But you are opposed to abortion. And on that final point, you were dinged from participating. They said you can't come because of your view on abortion. Is that right? Yeah, that evidently women can be anything they want except pro-life. Did someone tell you that? I mean, t tell me how you all were excluded and you're certain you, you were excluded. Yeah, well, we were offered a partnership. It was extended. We accepted it. Our name was up on the website. We thought it was really, really neat that this was truly inclusive and they wanted all women there um, to have, you know, a united voice. And then as soon as news came out that we were actually anti-abortion, um, there was a backlash and they, they caved to the pressure and went ahead and removed us. But, you know, it has sent a very clear message that they don't necessarily want to partner with pro-life women. But um, as I, the pro-life women I know, it has sent us a very clear message that we need to be there um, even more now. So why is it that abortion is really kind of the bottom line for feminist groups? You know, you can be with them on everything, but if you deviate on that, you are kicked out. Why is that the most important issue? to these groups, you, do you think? You know, obviously it's because they're talking about the woman's body and having control over her body. We completely agree a woman should absolutely have control over her body. What we're talking about is a separate body inside of her body that has unique DNA and heartbeat and brain waves. And, you know, half the time they're female, so we believe that they also have rights over their bodies. Right. But I wonder why, and I, I think that's nicely put, I wonder, it's almost ghoulish, the enthusiasm for this. I mean, something that most people at best consider a tragic and uh, occurrence. Why is it that these organized groups have put that at the very center of their agenda? It's like nothing else matters except that. You know, all I can think you know, is maybe... I, I'm